Today, Steven Spielberg's movie Lincoln makes its nationwide release in theaters. The movie touches on the Emancipation Proclamation as well as the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. These two documents help to shape history right here in the Palmetto State. I traveled to Port Royal, South Carolina to learn more. We were, we were trying to determine which one of these four pictures is my great-grandfather. 80-year-old Wesley Smalls safeguards four pictures in his St. Helena's Island home. He got them from his father years ago. My daddy had this in the old house, and so I took the advantage of taking it out and try to restore it as much as I can. Smalls says these folks in the pictures are his relatives who were slaves. He's still trying to determine their role in history in his region. Smalls lives a few minutes away from Port Royal, a place once home to thousands of slaves. Dr. Stephen Weiss is the Paris Island Museum director. The center houses plenty of information on the history of Port Royal. Where the United States government is using Port Royal as sort of a training testing ground for a, you might say, for future economic, military, social, political changes based around the former slave population how they want to see the United States formed after the war. Months after South Carolina seceded from the Union, federal ships from the north surrounded the island, blocking off the port. Those in the Confederate Army fled the area when the troops came in, leaving thousands of slaves behind. And these troops knew something needed to be done to help the slaves who were left at Port Royal. Federal government comes in, establishes a program to take care of them, and the Secretary of Treasury, Salmon Chase, sets up what he believes should be you might say the base for future reconstruction of the South. The program was called the Port Royal Experiment. All under a general by the name of Rufus Saxton who have hired the former slaves to work on plantations. They get paid to work on the plantations. They're gathering up money. It was during this time President Abraham Lincoln drafted an order called the Emancipation Proclamation. It was a wartime measure to help ensure freedom for all slaves. And on January 1st, 1863, at about sometime between 11.15 and 11.30 that morning, they will read the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation here at Port Royal. Some people claim this is the first official reading. Soon after, history is made. The Emancipation Proclamation motivated many slaves in Buford County to want to fight for the federal government. It's here in Port Royal that many historians say the first black regiment was born. Uh, they will serve on raids along the coast. Uh, one of their primary missions was go in to really destroy any evidence of slaveocracy, open up land for possible settlements uh, by the former slaves. Through the Port Royal Experiment, the Penn School, now called the Penn Center, was formed. Located on St. Helena's Island, it was one of the first schools for freed slaves. Today, the center houses plenty of information from photos, artifacts, and literature about slaves and their quest for freedom. Despite their freedom, Dr. Weiss says the proclamation would not be enough to secure their liberty. And that's why President Lincoln had something else up his sleeve. The Emancipation Proclamation is just that it is a war document. Once the war is over, it no longer holds any water. You need the 13th Amendment to make the Emancipation Proclamation federal law. For folks like Smalls, he says he's just happy to be living in the land of freedom. It makes me feel proud to know that of all these years that we have really came a long way to determine where we are and how we stand in this United States of America. And according to Dr. Weiss, the 1st Black Regiment went on to serve in several campaigns, including in the Civil War. They operated primarily between Jacksonville, Florida and Charleston, South Carolina.